Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. When Christ comes back, he's looking for those who are keeping his commandments. The same way he did. Christ kept, he did not keep the commandments for you to become an adulterer right. or a thief or a murderer. That doesn't make sense. That's what the church says. Yes, come as you are and stay as you are and just believe and have a good heart and you'll make it to the kingdom of heaven. Right. That is motivational speech type doctrine. That is not what the Bible says, brother. Bring you up. understand what they're teaching us as a nation of people? They're, those, that's, that's meant to keep us as slaves. Right. Keep us on the bottom. That's why we're the ones putting this country up even to this day. Yes. Who do you see working the construction yards? Who do you see working the cashiers? Yep. Picking up all the lumber and all that stuff? Right. It's the blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans. Right. We're not the ones running the company. Right. We're not the ones owning the water, the food. We're not there. It's because we decided not to keep God's commandments. Right? We would have had you hold it. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 9, that this is a rebellious people. So the people in this song, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, to be honest, we are a rebellious people. Right. Read. Lying children, huh? children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Our people don't want to hear the laws of the Lord. Right. Like how you're listening to fringes right now, some people are like, oh, that don't matter. They don't think that. Like how it's in the Bible, bro. It says to wear fringes forever. Right. And some people be like, nah. I don't need to do that. You see how people are rebellious? Read. Which say to the seers. Which say to the seers. Right now you are seeing the seers. We are the prophet of the Most High God have sent out to the streets and the hedges to right. wake his people up. Right. Right. And my brother, the Most High is calling you today. He's calling you today. Give me Psalm 94, 16. Right. He's calling you today, brother. The reason why you're standing here right now, that zeal, I can see the fire in your eyes, brother. You love God, and you want to learn his commandments so you can come back and serve him properly. Not right. that Catholicism BS. You know what I'm saying? All, all in the churches is lies. Right. That's, that's the whole doctrine is lies. That's why, how do you want to sit with the same people who put you through this? Right. And they're going to make it the same heaven as you. Right. I don't want to be in that heaven when they're in it. No. I want to be with my people, my brothers and sisters, ruling this planet in righteousness. Yes. Right. 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 Read that. The Book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. You know? Who will rise up for me? So God sent us out here to recruit for his army. Right, right now you're seeing the building of the Most High God's army. Yes. All throughout right. the Bible there's war. And, and, and we're taking over. We're doing our thing as a nation of people. Because we were once a strong and powerful nation. You know? Right now we have been scattered. We don't know who we are. You think, if you look right now, you think Puerto Ricans and Mexicans think they're brothers? No, they don't. We're scattered. We have been. We don't know who we are as a people. But once we come back to the knowledge, hold on. We're all under the tribe. I mean, all the, uh, excuse me. We're all under the Israelites. We are one nation. We are the majority of the planet. That's what we gotta realize. We are the majority. They separated us, gave us different religions, um, languages, and right. economics to split us up. So we can think we're minorities, right? But no, in actuality. We are the majority, and we're God's chosen people, and it's prophesied that we're going to come back and wake up and start keeping God's commandments. Right. We, who will rise up for me uh -huh. against the evildoers? So God is asking you a question, but he says, are you going to rise up for him against the evildoers? We, who will stand up for me uh -huh. against the workers of iniquity? That's what you see us doing right now. We are rising up for God and going against the iniquity that has been taught to our people. Right. right now, you have certain doctrines and certain things you learn, and we're going to try to cast out your head today. That Christianity nonsense, that's lies. Like, who is this man right here? Who do they tell us this man right here? You're probably familiar with that one. Yeah. Right. They said that's Jesus, right? So that's a that's an imagination that was pushed upon our people to keep us in slavery. Alright? Let's get that, the image of Christ. So I'm about to show you a few little things and I'm gonna help help build you up so you can understand like, alright, it's time. It's it's time to stop believing in this world, believing in this system, going to work day in and day out and having no problem with your life as a nation of people. Right. Alright? So read that. 
The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. Come on. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So the Bible says the revelation of Jesus Christ. Re revelation means to reveal. Why do you think there needs to be a revealing of Jesus Christ? They, they forgot. They lost. Yeah, they, we, they have this image in the world today. That's why when he comes back, everyone's going to be shocked out here. Everyone who does not read the Bible, they're going to be shocked like, Hey, who is this man coming out the sky? You know? He doesn't look like that dog-haired white man with blue eyes. Right. Right. No, he's going to be a dark-skinned black man, just like the Bible says. Right. Go to verse 14. Verse 14. Come on. His head and his hair were white like wool. So woolly hair, so the hair like you have on your beard. Woolly hair and it's white in color. As we age, some of our hairs turn white. So Jesus Christ had white woolly hair on his head and on his face. Breathe. As white as snow. Come on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes as a flame of fire like the whites of our eyes. It turned as we age or if we drink a little bit of strong drink. What color do the whites of our eyes turn? It nope. turns red. Right. So Jesus Christ drank wine and he was, he was aged. Breathe. And his feet. So he's looking at the tops of his feet. John the Revelator. So if he sees the top, if I can see the top of your feet, I would know. Oh, he's Hispanic. He's not a white man. You know what I'm saying? So you, I would know by the this color of your skin, right? So he's looking at Jesus Christ's feet. And he's gonna let you know a color description. Read. And his feet. Come on. Like unto fine brass. Fine brass. It's like a penny. So let's see if it was a dark skin brown or a light skin brown, right? Read. As if. They burn in a furnace. If you take that brown penny and you keep it cooking in a furnace, what color is going to turn? It's going to darken up to each other. It's going to be black. Now when you leave it in there, it's going to be black as, as black as it needs to be, right? So, you're finding out Jesus Christ is a black man. Right. You are an Israelite. That's and that right. you must, and if you want to love God, you have to keep the commandments of God. That's All right, right, give me the biggest 21 to 5. So, I'm going to show you a commandment that's easy. You know how he says it, they're not grievous. They're easy to keep. You're keeping a commandment without you even knowing it, brother. Because it's naturally in you to keep the commandments of God. Alright? That's why your body was actually made. And I'm gonna get that for you later, bro. Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So it says they should not make baldness upon their head. Like you know Shaquille O'Neal, Charles Barkley, Michael Jordan, that type of ball, you're not supposed to do that type of ball. Don't you notice that a lot of pastors, you know, ministers have super book that that real bald head? Right. They're not keeping the laws of God. Damn. Right. See, they have been set up by our enemies to right. lead our people astray. Right. Read. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Come on. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. God wants his men to have beards. That's why, right. do they, why do we want to be clean shaven for? That's what this world teaches us. Right. You understand the same people who run this world are the same people who are your enemies according to the Bible. Right. That's why they don't want you to have a beard on your face. Right. As men, how can you tell the difference between a, a male line and a female line? Bring it out. Have, one has a mane. Yeah, it has, you know, if you shave it off, you're like, damn, what's, what's the difference? God wants his men to have beards. Right. So you're already keeping that commandment. You know what I'm saying, brother? But there's more. We got to keep more. Give me the other Sabbath thing. Have you heard of the Sabbath thing, brother? You know? Give me Exodus 20. So, there's a Sabbath. So, God made the so God made the whole universe and everything in seven days, right? So, but he made everything in six days. But that seventh day, God rested. Right. You think if God is resting, you get to go around and do what you want? No, you rest with your father. That's and you right. listen to what he has to say. All right, read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. No. Remember the Sabbath. God says what? Remember. He's telling us to remember this day right here. Read. Remember the Sabbath day. Come on. To keep it holy. And we have to keep that Sabbath day holy. Right. Read. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. So we have six days out of the week to do all the work, to serve our work. And if you need to buy something, you do it during those six days. You need to work out. You know, say you need to go cook some food. You do it during those six days. But read. But the seventh day. But that seventh day, read. Is the Sabbath uh -huh. of the Lord thy God. That's the Sabbath day. You got to choose that day. That day is specifically dedicated to the Father who created you. Yes, That's right. how he, will, he requires that of you. Whether you know it or not, you are required to serve God every Sabbath day of your life. Right. Did you know that, brother? They're not, you, you, you familiar with that? So, when's the Sabbath day? Yeah, so if you look at a calendar, what days are always on the first, farthest left? What day is that? It's you no, know, like the days of the week, so you have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So, what days? Sunday's first, right? If you count seven over, what's the seventh day? Saturday. Saturday is that seventh day. Right. So, you see, every Saturday of your life, you, from here on out, you need to make it a, a thing to keep God's Sabbath day holy. I got a question for you. How do you keep God's Sabbath day holy? 
Right, let me show you. Let me show you, brother, because the thing is, the answer's here. And you have brothers here who are willing to teach you. Right. So you, so you can be a part of uh, the kingdom, so you can make it to the kingdom. Because you got to learn the commandments so you can make it to the kingdom of heaven. Right. So check this out. This is how you keep the Sabbath day holy. All right, read that. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10 and verse 31. Come on. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sale. So God is saying, if, if the people of the land, we're in captivity right now, right? So the people, we're in this, this land of our enemies right now. So it said if they bring any wares or victuals, which is like Taco Bell's wear or victuals, this gas station, so things to sell on the Sabbath day, read, that we will not buy it of them on the Sabbath. Are we supposed to buy or sell or conduct business on the Sabbath day? No. So why, why do all the deals and all the football games are going on on Saturday? Bring it out. To keep us breaking that commandment. Right. You know what else we're not supposed to do on the Sabbath day? Give me uh, Exodus 16. Hey, what you got? Read that. What you got? The book of Exodus, chapter 16, and verse 23. Come no. on. And he said unto them, This is which the Lord have said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. So in this instance right here, so God measures his days from Nights from sundown to sundown. So when the sun goes down, when the sky is completely dark, it's all technically the next day. Right. right. Not 12 at 12 at 12 a.m. How the white man says. Exactly. When that sun goes down right there, that's the next day. Right. So in this instance right here, it is Thursday. It's Friday during the daytime. All right. So read that again. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. So when the sun goes down, when the sun goes down tonight, it's going to be the rest of the Holy Sabbath. Read. Unto the Lord. Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today. Uh -huh. And see that ye will see. The commandment say, cook what you need to cook right now before the sun goes down. Read. And see that which you will see. Uh -huh. And that which remaineth over, lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So you're supposed to cook days prior. I mean the day before or the prep day should be laid over until the next morning. Because right. on the Sabbath day, Exodus 35 and 3. On the Sabbath day, you're not supposed to do this. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 35 and verse 3. Lord. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitation upon the Sabbath day. We're not supposed to be cooking also on the Sabbath day. Right. So no buying or selling and no cooking. So that goes with no coffee. You can't feel me. You can have cold coffee. You make coffee before, cold brew, put it in the fridge, you can drink it. You can eat cold foods on the Sabbath day. Right? If you like salads, tuna salads, wraps, any type of thing like that. It's like you can eat on the Sabbath day, but you can't just whip up a fresh burger. Right. You Bring can't it out. Cooking out there. Right. Or grilling. Right. So you see a lot of grills having it on Saturdays. Bring right? it out. Come to my house. You got to grill all day. They are breaking the Sabbath without them even knowing it. Right. right. People are lost. That's what's going on in today's society. But there's, there's more. Give me, give me the next one. Bring it up. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord, thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. You shouldn't do any servile work. All right, so that's three things so far that we want to do. No buying or selling, no working, and no cooking. All right, this is the last thing that you must do to keep your God Sabbath day holy. Three. This is the book of Leviticus. Chapter 23 in verse 3. Come on. Six days shall our work be done. For the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. So it says, let's talk about the Sabbath day, right? Read. And holy convocation. It's a holy convocation. That's a holy gathering. So you must come together. You can't sit at home by yourself saying, oh, I'm keeping the Sabbath day holy because I'm chilling. No, you must come together with your brothers and sisters. Right. Right? So so you see here, give us uh, Sarah 37 verse 12. You can so help. see here. We're out here, you know what I'm saying? Actually, before I get that, let's finish that up. Yeah, get that, get that. So, you see your brothers out here. We're out here trying to show the people how to stop breaking God's commandments and start keeping God's commandments so we can come back together as a nation of people and make it out of here right. to get to heaven. Because heaven's going to be on earth. It's not going to be in some spiritual plane up in the sky. Even though there is a heaven up there, but the real heaven's going to be on, on, on earth, the Christ, right? right? So, to get to that heaven, if you really want to make it to this heaven, brother, you got to hearken it to what the Bible says and start doing and applying what God says. Right. right? Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 12. Come on. Get out. But be continually with a godly man. So God says to help you to with the commandments, you must be continually with a godly man. Right. There's not a day that goes by that I'm not with my brothers here. There's not a day that goes by that I don't talk to one of them. Because God says to do what? Be continually with a godly man. God says be continually with a godly man. Read. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments. Who do you know that keeps the commandments today, brother? So your dad wears fringes? 
see? You gotta understand. They might they might do exactly what the Catholic Church says, right. but they ain't actually doing what the Bible says. You gotta understand. This is hidden from today's pastors. The theologians who went to school for this, they don't know what we're teaching you right now. So you know more than 90% of what pastors know because we're teaching the truth of the Bible, right? Which is the truth of the Bible. So you're here now, so you're actually, you're seeing those in front of your face, those who keep the commandments. We're right here. We, we have a school in Tallahassee. You know what I'm saying? 45 minutes from here. You have a car? Yeah, so you drive, you have a car? Brother, you know what I'm saying? And after this, I can get you your own, get your communication, you can contact, and see if you know if you're ready, you know, show you where our school is, talk to you if that many questions. But, I got one more thing for you. Uh, Leviticus chapter 19, and verse 27. You know, so, yeah. I see you got some um, some little ointment right there. So, is that a, is a fresh tattoo? You know what the uh, Bible says about that? Let me show you. Bring it up. You know what I'm saying? So, we were all once. Best believe, brother, I was on that same side as you. I didn't know the commandments of God. I was living in a world of wickedness. I was out there, you know what I'm saying? I was in the military, so traveling, doing all those different types of things, you know what I'm saying? I was in wickedness. Until I finally heard what I was supposed to do, I changed. Right. That's what repentance is. I know I'm doing evil, right? And then I hear the laws of God from the Bible, and then you change. That's all Jesus Christ wants for you, brother. Right. He knows you've been living your life until this point. You've been learning what you learned. But he's like, all right, if you're, my, if you're my true child, you're going to hear what I say to you, and you're going to change immediately. That's right. Not tomorrow. You're going to change now. This is what God requires of you, right? Read this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 28. Come on. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for your for the dead. So you're not supposed to make any. Give me another one, 21 five. So you're not supposed to make any cuttings in your flesh. That's a tattoo. So right now, you broke that commandment without knowing. But you don't know say you're still alive. You're under grace. So with that being said, you just heard the law of tattoos. Are you gonna get more tattoos from this day forward? That's repentance, but that's no. Hey, hold on. God said not to get tattoos? I didn't know that. So now, I'm never going to get a tattoo ever again. Bro, you ain't got to get it removed or nothing, brother. Do you know what I'm saying? Because that's, it's up to you. But don't ever get a tattoo ever again. All right, read. The book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 5. Come on. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Uh -huh. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Mm -hmm. Nor make any cuttings in their flesh. So that's tattoos again. So I see you got the cross. What, is that? what does the cross mean to you, my brother? I mean, Jesus, but all right, give me her back. So, when you see the cross, who does it represent? Does it represent this group of images here, or it represents this group, this image right here? Today, just be honest. Who does that cross represent? It represents, you talking about black Jesus? All right, so black Jesus says, keep the commandments. If it really represented him, you would have never got that tattoo. Right. So in actuality, the spirit behind that that uh, piece right there is this guy right here. Right. Because he lied to our people from Jerusalem. Ever since we got conquered, we have been lied to. Because they destroyed us, they made sure we couldn't read and all that, and they told us their false doctrine. So that's why our grand, our great, you know, everyone who's been here have been lied to. So they've been, they've been trying to serve God their best, but it's always with his intentions. His intentions is to keep us on the bottom, right? That's why, you know, you didn't know that commandment. So let me show you something about, oh, about the cross, about graven images. Read. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 18. Actually, hold that. 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 10. Hold that about the second spirit. So the thing is, that comes with another spirit. When you see people wearing a cross or that Jesus peace on them, that comes with that Christianity spirit. And God warned us about that spirit or right. receiving another spirit from a, the other people. All right, read that. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 4. Come on. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus. So the Bible says if he. It's not talking about one individual coming and preaching another Jesus. There's no way one person can change the face of Jesus Christ. That he is talking about a nation of people. Right. So the whole white race came with that image. They came. You see, there's a picture right here. He is hanging and they're coming up with a cross in his face. Hey, you're going to either bow down to this image or we're killing you right now. What do you think your fault people, most of your fault brothers, how to do? Hey, I ain't trying to die. I got, all right, I'm going to serve your Jesus. That's what Catholicism comes from. Right. They came here with a, with a with a sword in one hand, I mean, a Bible in one hand, a cross in another hand. You know what I'm saying? While y'all over there, y'all were over here trying to keep the commandments, they came and destroyed what y'all had to do because it was, it was prophesied that needs to happen. You need to fall away from God first, like we fell away right now, and then the coming back is right now. 
you're in the midst of prophecy. As if you repent, brother, and you start keeping God's commandments, you are living prophecy. And if you keep, if you are part of this prophecy, guess what's going to happen to you at the end? You will make the kingdom of heaven. That's right. If you repent today and start learning keep, and keeping God's commandments, you can make it to the kingdom of heaven, brother. Because that Catholic church, that Christianity church, they're not teaching our people how to make it to the kingdom of heaven. Right. They don't know. You can ask 10 Christians, and they'll give you 10 different answers. Right. Oh, you have to have the Holy Ghost. Oh, you got to God knows my heart. You know, you want to hear all that BS. We can show you in the scriptures. We're all here on one accord. If you ask each brother here how to get to the kingdom of heaven, they'll tell you the same exact thing. That's and that's how Jesus Christ and the 12 disciples were. If you ask Jesus something, all 12 disciples do that same thing. That's right. He'll be like, oh, these brothers are all on one accord. That's why the Pharisees describe that. Like, Hold on, we got to break this up. This is too much order going on right now. Right? Read that. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 4. Yeah. For if he that coming preaches to another Jesus, someone was going to come and preach another Jesus to us. Read. Whom we have not preached, whom our fathers have not preached. Right. Or if you receive another spirit. Receives another what? Another spirit. So we received another spirit with this image. Now another spirit comes with God loves everybody. You've right. heard that before. Bring it right? out. Christ is coming for everybody. Did Christ say he's going to come for everybody? Give me Matthew 15. So you're seeing there's going to be another spirit on this earth when it comes to Jesus. A lot of people believe they believe in Jesus, but they don't actually know it because they listen to what their pastors say instead of opening the Bible and reading it for themselves. Right. Right. So that's why we come out here. Read your Bible. A lot of people had a lot of time during this COVID-19 to read their Bibles. But I know 90% of the people were just slacking off doing whatever instead of coming back to God. You know? This world could have been ended. He could have literally turned up the heat with that virus. Right. He decided, all right, I'm going to just give him a little bit to let them know I'm here. I can put the whole world on lockdown. Now he got everybody in this world wearing masks. You, know? you see how serious our God is? The God who made heaven and earth, he's only your God. Right. You're not, you got to understand what, what I'm really saying. He's only your God. He's not the God of the white man driving around. Right. They wish they could be, but that's why they hate our guts and they keep us on the bottom. Right. Because you know? God only chose you. Yeah. He only chose the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. That's how much power we have once we come back to keeping God's commandments. He will put our, his heads around us and we'll make it back to the kingdom of heaven. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.